KP has not yet returned, and Maxi is now, it looks like, out as much as 10 to 14 days, although we're waiting for confirmation on that until he's retested today and we get the results, which, by the way, could drop at any time. I could literally be in the middle of this segment, and we get an update that says, oh, Maxi's here, in which case I say, well, that segment aged like a fine wine, all of 20 minutes. But, you know, you work with what you can. The point is the Mavericks are depleted. They're missing a lot of guys that they really need. And they're probably going to have to... They're probably going to have to reach towards the end of the bench. And so I think you're going to see more Josh Green, who, against Orlando, got his first start of his career. I think you will see some Hinton. I think you will see uh, some, maybe a little bit of Tyrell Terry. Maybe, maybe not on him just yet. But you're going to see some of these guys, including a certain potential X-Factor who we saw against Orlando play some good minutes. Now, he's a bit raw. It is his former team he was playing, but he's a bit raw offensively. But he brings a certain energy and athleticism and length that can't really be denied. So we'll see what happens there. The Mavericks are pretty much having to reach down the end of the bench. They're having to try and find guys who can help them. And I talked about the different, you know, the different rookies and young guys on this roster. One potential X factor that we could see might be Wes Awundu. Now, he's raw offensively. He did play good minutes against Orlando. I don't think he scored in the game. I actually want to check that out now. He didn't take many shots, though. He brought energy, definite energy that leapt off the screen. Uh, and let me see here. Yeah, he played 32 minutes, six boards and an assist, 0 of 2 from the field, including 0 of 1 from 3, but he gave you two steals as well. He was a plus 17. Now, he did play for Orlando previously. He also was, I think, with the Rockets at one point, um, or is he just from University of Houston? I forget, but he's he's one of those guys who he's always going to be far down the bench, he was stoked about coming to Dallas and getting to play with Luka. And, you know, it makes sense. A, a guy like him, a 3 and D perimeter type guy, a, a potential 3 and D guy. He's got to, I think, continue developing that three-point shot. But when you have a guy who can, with his energy alone, impact the game, then you have someone who is valuable to a lot of teams. Now, I'm pulling up here. His career average, only 4.7 points, 2.5 boards, and about an assist per game. Career three-point percentage, not strong, 31.8%. So that's why he's not 3 and D, but he's got that potential. Luka will get him the looks. Orlando is the only other team he played for. Excuse me. I think he went to the University of Houston. He never played for the Rockets. But he's got a little bit of something as far as his energy, defense, and length, and all of that. And for that reason, for a bottom-of-the-roster guy, I don't mind him. But the Mavericks are going to have to reach further down the bench as they try to kind of weather this storm with a lot of their perimeter athletic guys out. And uh, that puts us in this situation. So Wes was... This is his fourth season. He's 26 years old. He's had 187 career games. So he's not... A young pup in that sense. He's got some experience, but his best three-point shooting season. And the reason I say that with any importance is because playing with Luka, you're going to have most guys increase their career best three-point percentage because Luka's going to get them the looks. If they're on the court, he will help them bump that percentage up. His career best three-point shooting year, his second and third year in Orlando, he was actually a 36, almost 37% three-point shooter in 2018-19. The following year, he was 34%. Dropped off hard last year to 25%. Uh, and obviously not off to a super fast start this year, but limited opportunity until now. So I want to see what he can do. I want to see what he can bring. He's got some good length and athleticism. His perimeter defense, I think, is going to be necessary as the Mavericks potentially weather this storm. We'll see how long, again, that Maxi's out. We'll see how much longer the, the three Mavericks in Denver have to continue quarantining. They can't even quarantine at home. They're literally 
still hanging out in Denver waiting to rejoin the team. And for it to be uh, two starters in Finney Smith and Richardson, then you're in a real bind. And for it to be a guy, a regular off your bench, that's effective for you as well. And Brunson, that puts you at a disadvantage. Now, the first two are obviously lockdown perimeter defender types. So not having them is noticeable. In the last game against Orlando, the Mavericks did not force a lot of turnovers. It kind of reverted back to last year in that regard. Whereas the start of this year, Dallas was getting active hands in the passing lanes, breaking up pick and roll passes, whether that was Johnson. A lot of that was Richardson and Finney Smith. So it was noticeable, the one game without them. And in that game, with Orlando ravaged with injuries like they are, it didn't matter in the end. And then, of course, you had Burke and Hardaway Jr. absolutely lose their minds and go off. That's great. But you're gonna have to you're gonna have to weather some of this storm. And Owundu, he's shown himself to be capable as a perimeter defender. You're going to have to move into the uh, you're gonna have to move into the rotation. Josh Green, who they've been trying to bring along kind of slowly. I know they started him and he played 15 minutes against the Magic, but you're gonna have to get some of these you know these athletic rangy types out there and. You know, maybe you see a little bit of Tyler Bay potentially. I don't know. But this is something that Dallas is going to have to consider and basically make a determination on how they're going to proceed with uh, the next few games until they get everybody back, until they weather the last of the storm. You know, these guys have to be out uh, 10 days. If they have a positive test, And that's why they're still in Denver quarantining. And it's not a situation like Maxi where it's kind of uh, unconfirmed and it's up in the air inconclusive. Then in that situation, you have to uh, wait at least 10 days. After 10 days, you're not contagious anymore. And so after 10 days, you can get retested and uh, rejoin the team. Now, I had some experience with that myself when myself and my family had it. And yeah, we retested at the end of 10 days, came back negative. And so there's a difference as well. I don't know how the NBA is doing their testing. It's different than the rapid testing because the rapid testing is not as, um, it's not as reliable, basically, unless you have, like, you can still be, you can still have it and be contagious potentially, but it doesn't, it looks at it differently. I'm not a microbiologist or anything like that. I just know that when I originally had it, I tested, I, I did a rapid test, I came back negative, and so I just kind of went about life as usual. And then right about the time I finally turned the corner, I had very mild symptoms, but when I finally turned the corner, then my wife and daughter got sick, and I just thought like, oh, well, they just have like a cold or something like I had, like a head cold. And then my wife, a couple days later, lost her sense of smell and taste, and, and we realized, oh, crap. So she got tested, did both the rapid and the test that takes a few days, and both came back positive. So we realized, oh, I must have been a false negative. Then she obviously had it. And so it just, it led to just a a complete cluster in that regard. Obviously, the NBA has got the resources to do rapid, more reliable testing than that. But if the Mavericks are without those guys, they're going to be without them for at least a little bit longer. And so guys like... Wes here are going to have to step up and make an impact for them. Green as well. Green's looked at times a little bit like a deer in a headlight. He's got the explosive athleticism and the length. We see that. But he's going to have to kind of have his not so much welcome to the NBA moment, but he's going to have to make some adjustments quick. He's got to get ready quick. And we've seen flashes. We need to start seeing Uh, Instead of like little strobe flashes here and there, we need a consistent light for a while that we can check out. So uh, 